Hi everyone, it's Kim Williams here from Flourish r and and I am so honoured today to be taking part in this amazing empowered conversation with the very beautiful Risha Jane. Um, Thank you. The powerhouse behind these conversations, that the, the bringing in of all the skills and amazing women who have taken part in this series. Now, I met Risha um, a couple of years ago when we both signed up for B-School, but what I really wanted to be able to focus on in this conversation is your journey as to how you've brought forward these empowered conversations, how you wanted to be able to bring the messages forward to all of us women who are making huge life changes. And I'm going to allow you to speak now and just, just let everyone in on the conversation. Tell us about yourself, honey. Thank you, Kim. Um, well, you know that I am a business strategist, at least that's the title I call myself these days. And I yes. help women build businesses without the hustle and businesses that are aligned with who they are. Okay, authentic businesses. But the idea for this series, I mean, you know what? The more I look around, the more aware I become of my surroundings and of the world and of the social structures and stuff, the more I feel that as women, we are kind of shortchanged. Yes, you have one day in the year like Women's Day, but <clears throat> the rest of the year, and even on Women's Day, it's mostly just lip service. Much of the culture around us is created for men, by men, etc. It's, it's not, very fake. It's very it's fake. It's very fake. It's very superficial. And most of the advice out there doesn't really work for women. Most of the advice in any single field or area you look at doesn't work for women. And I wanted to be able to record or to bring out real conversations with real women. The issues that women really struggle with that no one talks about. <clears throat> Sorry, Beautiful. I don't know if it's cold. It's okay. So that's, that's the whole idea behind this series. And I was lucky enough to know this group of amazing women who I reached out to on a whim on a Friday afternoon. And things just went from there. I so love how this series came up. And I think we got every single conversation we've recorded. We've been able to convey that message, convey that strength and that power that comes with being a woman. And you know, basically just stepping into your own power. And it's so amazing. All these diverse women from different backgrounds, different countries, different time zones, and how beautifully it all came together. So it's been incredible. It's been, it's been amazing to watch, and because I know having worked in a very traditional uh, masculine businesses and corporate background, how at times women are really drawn into that very competitive, very masculine energy. And it can take a long time to be able to reprogram yourself to come out of that. Yeah. But to be able to watch something so beautiful, and it really has been eight women who have come around that table and just said, yes, count me in. Yes, yes, I'm in. Absolutely. Let's do this. <clears throat> and we've all been so supportive of, of everyone's conversations and you know, everyone's, and many of us are healers, but we do the healing in our own way. We, we bring that, and I'd love for you to talk more on, on how we're, we're changing the traditional to something much more modern um, <laughs> in our businesses these days. It's beautiful to see. Absolutely. So again, you know, back when I was in the corporate, I didn't realize it, but that the corporate structure was very, very masculine, and that's why I had trouble fitting in. We talk more about this in the conversation with Soli. So those of you who are struggling in corporate, go over and watch that conversation. But, it was fantastic. <laughs> thank you. And now that I've stepped into business, you know what? It took me over 10 years to make this business journey. I started out in 2008, before my son was born, around 2007, mm -hmm. really. And I, I knew I always wanted to be my own boss and you know make something of my own. But... Nothing quite clicked. The yeah. one, I used to be a techie. I used to be in semiconductor software for over 13 years. And uh, the typical, the path, the only path that people saw in front of you, if you wanted to be your own boss, was to prepare a business plan, go yeah. look for VC funding, and set up in someone's garage with a couple of computers and a couple of friends, and work 24-7 until you make the next big Google and you 
<laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and you the funding and things like that. Everyone wanted to create the next Google. And the more I looked into that, I realized that's not what I wanted. And not just me, other women around me, women in their 30s and 40s, women with kids. You don't want to leave a job that feels dead end, where you're pushing against a glass ceiling, where you're hit with a motherhood energy. Yes. You don't want to leave that and go into a carrot startup where you have to work 24 seven without any returns whatsoever for the first couple of years, right? Yep. That's the reality of it. <clears throat> the yes. Everyone likes to paint a rosy picture, but that's the reality of it. When you get into the startup yes. world, it's, you're not going to see it for the first couple of years until you either sell out or you go IPO. Mm -hmm. And women in our age, we don't want that. You know, but what it is that we really want we want to be, we want to step into ourselves. We want to be who we are. We want, to, we want the freedom to be who we are. We want the freedom yes. to utilize our skills, our passions for a larger good. We want to be seen as more than just a wife, mother, or an employee. We want, we want to be a force for positive change in the world. That's what we want. You know, at 30 and 40 and 50, after you've done the corporate stint, after you've done your duties and wifely duties and all of that, that's what we want. We want to be ourselves unapologetically, authentically. You want to shine. And traditional yes. businesses and all of the business advice in the world doesn't quite let you do that. It doesn't No, you. no it doesn't. And it's very much women are encouraged to play a supporting role more than they're encouraged to play a leading role exactly. in their own careers and in their own businesses. And it can be very disheartening when we know we've got more to offer, when we know we can, we can help and when we can help create something so much better, even in a corporate setting, to feel very undervalued. Exactly. To feel very, um, and at times undermined by men who don't recognize that by allowing that creative energy to come in that feminine energy to come in and make something better they're very much threatened by yeah. the new and this is the new normal absolutely the threat you know i was just thinking about this a while ago um, in my corporate career you know for over 13 years i never reported directly to my manager as in you know, I was always shunted around. If I had a male manager within a year or six months, I would be moved to the female manager in the group. And there was always, in my entire career, there was always one female manager only. Okay, So I would be moved to her because the men didn't quite know how to handle me. Because I was a smart, assertive woman. I had a life of my own and I didn't mix words. I didn't play down to them. So it was not out of bias or offense, but they just didn't know how to deal with me because they're not used to dealing with smart, assertive, vocal women. And so Agreed. this female, this woman manager had nothing to do with the project I was working on. She had no idea about it. But repeatedly, I would be moved to a woman manager who would just be my manager on paper and I would always work with some doctor line managers across the world and things like that. So it was quite crazy. And since you mentioned that, you know, it's just that men don't know how to deal with it. They don't know how to no. deal with young women. Women are stepping up and owning our voices, and the men haven't quite yes. discussed it. No, they haven't. And because a lot of the time when we are stepping up and owning our own voices and really stepping into our own zones of genius, I guess you could call it, yes. it's also coming at a time where there's a lot of emotion behind it because... It's, it's breaking down all of those walls we've, we've been told to have up. And when the emotion comes into it, guys turn around and go, oh, no, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Rather than listening to the message behind it because we've gotten to the point where we have to get quite upset or quite assertive to be able to get our message across. Rather than listening to the message, they're just saying she's upset again, she's yelling again, she's a crazy, angry, crying, teary, emotional woman again. I, and it's, I, I am a woman and I'm trying to get a message to you that has been absolutely 
building up and, and what it is is that they're actually intimidated by the fact that we have an ability to be able to be intuitively authentic in what we bring forward and they're not used to that because they're very used to the traditional mode of business correct correct absolutely absolutely uh, just a few days ago uh, there was this meme going around the uh, facebook where <clears throat> a guy and a woman swapped names in they shared a common inbox he was her manager his okay. manager was putting pressure on her saying that she doesn't perform really well she takes much more time to wrap up projects okay and they had a common inbox because you know she replied to some emails he replied to some emails and for about a week uh, somehow you know one finally he noticed that client started talking back to him really rudely on email right their email suddenly became nastier and after a few weeks of that, he noticed that his email signature had gotten swapped, or rather he was using her account to reply. Okay. So the signature at the end said Nicole, rather than, I'm forgetting what his name was, but the girl's name was Nicole. And he was like, what just happened? And he went and spoke to her. She's like, yeah, that's how they always talk to me. And he's like, no, that's not how they talk to me. So they continued the experiment for a while, and he figured that... <clears throat> Well, during the week or two weeks, he was replying under her name, though he was still interacting with the same clients, though he was still giving them the same advice that he normally did. Just the fact that it came from her email account made them value it less. It made them be rude to him. It made them wow. question every bit of advice he was giving them because it was coming wow. from his name. And in that same period, this woman who was replying from his email address, she got like, 3x the amount of work done. Okay. Um, wow. It's just that as women, we have to spend a lot of time convincing people to just listen to us. Exactly. And that, that's what it comes down to. And then that's where we end up getting to the point where we don't trust our own Absolutely. intuitive. We don't trust ourselves enough to be able to step out and forward because we know this stuff. We know this stuff and we doubt, you know, the imposter syndrome, you know why it plays more on women than on men? Because mm. anytime a woman speaks up and says something, she's questioned a hundred times. Agreed. <laughs> Not just I know. in business as well. Earlier on when I started my business and I would be pitching to men, you know what? Our discovery calls would go on for an hour and an hour and a half and then they would send me five emails afterwards asking about everything under the sun. And I would get asked personal questions like, are you married? Does your husband support your work? Ooh. Hello. What does it I'm matter? I'm a business consultant. What does it matter? Right? Yes. So my ability was being questioned and I realized I was spending way too much time trying to sign up those clients. And instead, if I just focus on women, there is, boom, that resistance is gone. I don't have yeah, to put my head against the wall. I don't have to convince them. If they feel it's a good fit for me, uh, for them, if they yes. think I'm a good fit for them, they will sign up. They won't ask me take unnecessary one. questions and to jump through hoops just to sign them up. It just blows or my head. Or ask if you're a, married or do you have kids? And when, when, when women ask those questions of each other, it's because we're genuinely interested. It's supportive. You know, married, it's supportive. kids. Know and, and understand rather than, well, if she has kids and she's married, she's not going to give me the level of service I need. Exactly. No. Exactly. <laughs> we work when harder to provide that. Exactly. When I say that to a guy versus when I say that to a woman, that I'm a single mother, from the guys it brings around a thing that, you know what, there's no way she can help me. She won't be able to help me. She's, she doesn't have her act together. She can't do it. And when I say that to women, what I get is respect. Yes. Right? Like, because we, we, excuse where I'm about to put this, but we get shit done. Okay? If that done. means yes. that we're up, we're, we're up until a quarter to 12 at night because we've got this last thing we want to do for a client, so it's in our inbox before she gets up in the morning, we're going to get it done. Absolutely. And you know what? <clears throat> Women get shit done. We do. We yeah, we do. Right? Yeah, we do. <laughs> I had um, another, a little one for you this week that made me giggle, actually. I had someone turn around it, that I used to work with in corporate um, had put up on their Facebook post, going into another meeting, 
pretty sure this could have been done via a 10, you know, 10 word email, but I have an hour meeting that I've been dragged into. And I wrote a PM to her actually saying, well, hold on, when you walk in there, you have the ability to assertively keep that meeting nice to 15 minutes. And if the men start waffling, sorry, guys, I've got stuff I need to get done. Let me know if there's anything else you need in an email. <laughs> Great, have a good day. And that's because we don't need to, we don't need to have overinflated egos to get done what we need to get done. Exactly. Interesting that you said that. I think, again, it's a sweeping generalization. I understand that not all men are like that, but most men have rigid egos, especially the higher up the corporate ladder they climb. Mm -hmm. The higher mm -hmm. up the corporate ladder they go, the more fragile the egos. <laughs> uh, and it's, you know, and, trying, and, and being a woman working at that level with them or in a supporting role with them, it can be very, very, very difficult to, to not turn around and really just end up hating the person. Not the fact that you're in the job, but you're actually hating the person that you're working to because they're no longer a match to your vibration. Yes. And when you start feeling that, that's when it's time to get out and or start looking for something that lights you up. Absolutely. You know what, uh, since we are talking about corporate, I want to revisit some of the advice that women get shunted around in corporate and especially when you're celebrating Please. Women's Day, right? Please. It's like, <clears throat> be more assertive, be more visible, speak up more often, negotiate a higher salary. Okay, this is the advice. When you go to career coaches or counselors, right, that's the advice people tell women. People tell women. They don't tell the yeah. rest of the organization, they tell women. And you know what happens when a woman is assertive? She is labeled as aggressive. Or bossy. bossy. Or demanding. Rude. Demanding. Not nice. Not nice. Negative. Picky. Yep. And that's why women step back. And that's why women are not assertive. When she wants something done, she would say, hey, you know, do that. She would yep. say, hey, you know, can you please do that as a favor to me because oh, blah, 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 blah. And it's almost as if we have to manipulate and persuade the situation to get exactly. what we want. And we have to. We have to. That's the only way to get things done in corporate. So if you're assertive, it's going to backfire badly. It's not because of you as a woman. It's because mm -hmm. people around you who are mostly men do not know how to deal with an assertive woman. And it's they the are going to be coached, not coaching the woman to be assertive. So being assertive, uh -huh. speaking up. Please. Speaking up. Oh yeah. man, this one is a huge one. You uh -huh. know how women are interrupted when they speak up. You remember, did, did you follow the Hillary and Trump thing? I'm forgetting what it was, the primaries or something. They had a debate and how many times you shut her up with stupid questions and stupid interruptions. Ah, now but I can appreciate what it would have taken for her to not blow her. <laughs> and that's, and to that's make about speaking. Cool and reply to that. I mean, and time. that's about. I, I always teach clients as well, or, or those I'm working with, speak up with class, not with ass. Okay, mm -hmm. so don't shoot other people down just to get your point across. Hold yourself nice and calm, even though your emotions are bubbling up and just want to come out. Hold yourself as calm as you can. Mm -hmm. Go over it in your mind what you need to say and then say it. Yes. And okay, so that's not censoring. That's not being calm. You have to word it in a way such that it is easy on male egos. Uh, but don't yes. do that. That's, if you're in corporate, that's a way of life. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned uh, negotiating salaries. There was some study. I, I remember I, I used to look up, a, do a lot of research on these numbers while I was in corporate, right? There were a lot of studies from Harvard and other places which said that women didn't negotiate their salaries and women should negotiate their salary. Now, both of us having been in corporate long enough, we know what happens when a woman negotiates her salary or asks for something that's even a bit yep. higher, even a 10% increment, right? She is, you're nodding your head along. Right? I am, I am, I, I, I recall all of this quite clearly. She's immediately blacklisted as someone who wants too much. Who wants more she's high maintenance. Players. She's going to ask she's too much of her staff. Yeah, and yep. therefore she's not a good team player and therefore you should not hire her because she mm -hmm. asks. Now, that's, it doesn't quite come across that that's what ultimately happens. 
But in their head, what's happening is, as soon as you ask for a raise, in their head, she's devoted, she's not a good team player, she should be off the team. And they can't yeah. say that that bias is simply because she's a woman. It's, it's yeah, so, so, so subconscious, that correlation, that when a woman asks for something that she deserves, it's, it has negative connotations always. Agreed, and that's that's where we end up doubting our doubting the skills and abilities that we have. It's where we doubt our own self worth because we start listening to and putting way too much weight into what others think and feel, and that's why a lot of women are now getting out of corporate. They don't want Absolutely. to work in corporate. And all the advice for women out there, you know, all of the advice out there is for women. Do this, do that, be more assertive, negotiate, speak up, etc. But they forget what happens when women actually do that. Women stay silent for a reason because they've seen the backlash that happens when they speak up. Yes. That's why, yes. That's why they stay silent. And that's why they're moving out of corporate rather than trying to, you know, bang their head against a brick wall. But I, I, I don't know how many... I am lucky to have worked with a couple of women who were very high executives... Um, but they were also, they had to have that real masculine energy to them. They couldn't, you know, they were wearing the dark suit or they were wearing, you know, they had to, they were, and they weren't very big women at all. You have to become one of the guys to be accepted. You do. You You do, and you have to work harder to get there. Yes, yes. You have to work twice as hard and behave like the guys. Swear like them, make them dress like them. But you know what? We're not going to pay you the same amount as them and you can just yeah. suck that up. <laughs> Absolutely. You know? yep. So, yep. And that, that is why a large number of women are leaving corporate. And what, what I am pleased about right now is that when you move to starting your own business, how do you do that? Especially if you've been in corporate a long time. You will go look up a bunch of courses, programs and all that mm-hmm. stuff, right? And it's like jumping from the frying pan to the fire. Because, again, all of those courses are made from a male perspective. And it took me a long time to realize that because I did a, quite a few big name courses on launching your own business. I went to a bus- an actual business school. I am uh, Bangalore, which is like the best in India. And everything that they taught me there, trust me, I have not used any of it in the years I've been in business for myself. Even it's amazing, honestly, isn't it? online courses that are joined by big, really big names in the online world. Yep. Uh, while they, they taught me the basics of marketing and other stuff, they didn't work for me. And I realized, it took me a long while to realize why now. That's when I signed up for B-School with Marie for Leo. Um, yep. It was for the first time in my life that I had, there was a supportive group of women that the people around me were sharing similar situations. They understood where I was coming from. They understood my issues and they had similar experiences. Women from yes. across the world. That yes. was the first time in my life that I didn't feel that I was an outlier. You know, the odd one out. In and it's amazing when you get to feel that, that collective community feel. Absolutely. And finally you found your place. Exactly. And it was only when I found this supportive group of women that I realized what had been wrong with all of the other courses and stuff. That yes. even there, I was the odd woman out. Mm. That they did not relate to my life experiences. They did not relate to my struggles. They talk about the hustle that you have to do. They talk about all the marketing you have to do. They talk about things from a very different perspective from mine. And I realized that that was a clash of the masculine and the feminine. It took me yes. a long while to figure that out. Okay, yes. and things like uh, giving away a lot of stuff for free, right? Now, if you look in the online business world these days, that's what the talk of, is about: creating great content, giving away a lot of stuff free in your free, in your freebies, in your blog posts, in your live videos, and those kind of things, right? To build a rapid, yeah. to build an audience, right? Yeah. Where that falls flat for women is women are traditionally used to giving. We're used to giving and giving and giving and giving. And then we're asked to give more. <laughs> and it doesn't make sense because the men folk, 
Uh, you know, if you look, I can look at a freebie and tell you whether it was created by a guy or a woman, right? Mm. And the guy's freebie, you'll have a lot of love. Again, I'm making generalizations and I understand it's not all that way, but that's yeah. most of the cases. So it'll be a lot of love and probably two or three actionable points. It'll be very, very simple. And I'm like, I gave you my email address to get this information, this crap. And if when yeah. I look at women's freebies and especially the clients that I work with, I find they give away so much. They overwhelm. Um, they they are they come from a place of giving. They give away so much information, but they don't realize it can be overwhelming for the person who's reading it, and they have to simplify it, right? And you have to you have to find that to balance it. Yeah, because what it is is, and this is the energy work that I do. Sorry about putting this in, but no, no. you have to have the energy that goes out. You have to give back in kind. You have to be open to exactly. receiving that in kind. Exactly. If you want. If you are giving 99% of yourself out to the world, 1% is not going to sustain you in return. Absolutely. And that's why I hate all of the advice about giving, giving, and giving more. You have to take it in context. Men are not used to giving. So when they hear that advice over and over again, it opens them up to giving. But women who are yes. used to giving 90%, 99% of ourselves to everything that we do, whether it's work, family, kids, everything, Right? When you tell a woman that she has to give every, give even more, you're asking her to yeah. give him an empty cup. Instead, the advice to yes. women should be to receiving. Agreed. Help, hire people. Agreed. Outsource. For all, in typical business programs, all of this advice, or especially the outsourcing part, comes much, much later. Mm -hmm. yeah? But you have to look at it in the context of women. Women by our age group, 30, 40, we're mothers, which means we are sleep deprived. I don't know any mother who's not sleep deprived unless she has someone else to take care of her kid full time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> our attention is fractured uh, in the sense that if you're working from home, chances are the kid walks in five times while you're typing out anything at all. Yep. And he decides that he needs help right then and there while you're on an emergency <laughs> call. And no matter how yes. you explain about your work to them, they still need mommy when they need mommy, and you can't deny that. Yes, and, right? and they will always come first, and that's, that's who and we are. And there's nothing wrong with that. No. You know, in the corporate world or the world that we came from, work was supposed to come first. Okay. And, and you know what? When we're young, when we're young and we don't have the husband or we don't have the child and, and all that stuff, we're willing to throw ourselves in 195% to be able to A, prove who we are, B, get the skills to be able to get to that position five times up removed from you because that's where you're aiming for and to work phenomenally stupid hours and energy into it to really only get very little return at that point. But once you become a mother, as soon as you become a mother, everything changes. Nothing yes. quite prepares you for that part of it that you will change as a person. Your perspective and your priorities will change. Yes. Okay. And you will always put your child first. And there's nothing yes, wrong with that. Without a doubt. I know there are without people, a doubt. Yes, you have to take care of yourself and yes, you have to receive and you have to replenish yourself. But you know what? As mothers, we always put our children first. It doesn't matter. And what. I, I, I absolutely agree. And what I really wanted to be able to touch back on again is the self-care side of things. Okay, because I love the fact that you referenced that you cannot serve from an empty cup. You cannot, you cannot yes. keep giving from a space of lack. You cannot keep giving from a space of exhaustion. You cannot keep giving from a, a place of no more energy, you know, and we've all been there and we've all done it to the point where we've just had to turn around and go, enough's enough and I now need to honour my energy levels and need to look after myself and that... Yes. As whether you are working corporate, you are an um, uh, emerging business owner, you are a business owner, you've got your foot in each world, whatever part of the journey that you're in, that is so important to be aware of. To honour yourself. To put yes. yourself first. And I think that's yes. the biggest lesson that women business owners need to learn. And of course, no program teaches you that. Um, no. It's like... They talk about all of these 
all of the business advice out there talks about how to position yourself, pricing, packaging, and those typical things, marketing, right? But very what masculine. we understand is that women, when we step into a business, it's not just to make money. It is always, always a journey of personal transformation. We are starting a business to help us with something more. We are starting a business to help us become or be our more authentic selves. We are oh my starting gosh. a business to change the world, to be something bigger, to create something bigger than ourselves. Yes, money is important in a business, but it's not ever the only factor when a woman starts a business. No, it's, it's you are being called upon to be of service. You know what, through your journey, through what you've learned, through what you've achieved in the first half of your life or the first third of your life, you are now being asked to transmute that into something that could teach others how to do the same thing, that could lead. That you have to lead. It's, it, you know, when, when we were in corporate, here's one for you, when we were in corporate, a boss is very much someone who will speak down to you and demand and dictate and stuff. That is what a boss is, okay? And we always, you would remember maybe one or two people that you ever worked with who were leaders, who would stand by your side and turn around and show you and teach you. And then once you've almost got your little, you know, you've got your two-year-old footing and you're almost walking but not quite running, they would just nudge you forward that little bit to turn around and say, you now lead, show mm -hmm. me. And that's what we're doing. That's that's the you that's know, what this we do when we create a business. When women are creating businesses, it is to lead. It is, it is to make. It's always. It's often to bring about positive change in the world that's larger yes. than themselves. To leverage their yes. years of experience and who they've become to help other people. Okay. Oh, beautiful. The money is important. Yes, because without that. Without the money pack, it would be a not-for-profit or a hobby. So the money is... Without the money part, there's no more handbags and shoes. So <laughs> the money definitely comes into it, but it's not, it's not the major factor with regards to why exactly. we do the work we now choose to do. Exactly, exactly. Why we choose the work we choose to do is mm -hmm. stepping into ourselves, stepping into our heart, stepping up. And that's, again, where women kind of hit the glass ceiling in business, is that all our lives we've been told not to be leaders. Ugh. We have been conditioned to not lead. So, yes, we are great leaders when it comes to parenting. You know, moms, the way moms handle things is the best example of leadership ever. Okay. And do you know why we're so good at that? We nurture. Because we listen to our intuition. <laughs> We yes. listen to our feelings on things. If that's, I just said that. that that's you where we that's where we listen Owning from. them, acknowledging them, and acknowledging them as a source of power. Yes. Yes, yes. Right? The world tells you that emotions mean that you're weak. That women are weak because we have emotions, because we're too touchy feely. Right? That's not true. Emotions, feelings are our strength. It helps us. You know what? It is emotions what will help us put our boots on in the morning and get shit done. Emotions are what drive us. You want to say hi? Okay, this is what I was talking about. Kids, Yay! Have you have to be low for the camera. Yes. Hi. <laughs> Please close the door. Hey, Paul. Yes, but uh, half an hour. Okay, close the door. And this is when I've given him explicit instructions that we are recording and it's an important conversation. He can do whatever he wants, but just don't open the door. I this got one for you, Ryan. Ryan. This is how my <laughs> I knock on the wall here when I'm about to start recording so she knows not to walk in. And then I knock on the wall here when we're finished so she can come in and say <laughs> hello at the end when it's no longer recording. So this is how we do things. This is how we do things. And there are courses and programs and coaches out there who tell you that that means you're unfocused. That means you're not dedicated or committed to your work. Uh, you know what? I am I'm committed like hell to the work I do. I make a difference in the lives of my clients. Yes. And I make a big difference in the life of my son. You and are showing your son, you are showing your son what a woman is capable of. You are showing your son that when a woman steps up into her power, so very 
elegantly with grit and the desire for something better, she will achieve more in this world than anything that he's seen in his past. Thank you. That's what you're showing your child. Thank you, Kim. That's okay. That, and you know what? That's <laughs> kudos to you, honey. It's the reason why I do what I do. My 10-year-old is so extremely intuitive and she needs a positive role model to know that intuition and being led by that intuition is normal. Absolutely. And you know what? Things like this is what said what what make it different for women. Yes. We work from, you know, even whether you call it intuition or not, that instinct that women have yes. is so powerful and all our lives we are told to suppress it. Mm. We are conditioned to suppress it. And yet, you know, have you read that book, Emotional Intelligence? So when some guy comes up and says that emotions are a very important part of being a leader, right? It's hailed as a new phenomena and someone goes out and creates tests and stuff to measure it and, yeah. it. and it's talked about in all the leadership programs. But a woman who's naturally emotional and in tune with her feelings and her instincts, that's bad. When a guy does it, it's good. When a woman does it, it's bad. That's, I, that's the funny thing. <laughs> I, once had, I once had an executive turn around and say to me, and this is amazing, I was so chuffed by this, he said to me, I have, he said there is emotional intelligence, so you've got your EQ and you've got your intelligence intelligence. So you've got those that go to university, those who are very okay, traditional, I'm those sure who are very EQ. Yes. Yep, you've got, you've got the two. And for the positions that I got into, I did it by hard work and by gut, not by going to school. I only went to year 12, but I worked with executives that were that had spent that 10 years and doing the MBAs and all, and I sat around the table with those guys and held my own. And he said, I have never, ever, ever seen a woman be able to do that and I have never seen a woman who hasn't had that huge amount of certificates and knowledge in business behind her be able to do that. He said, you've got the EQ that is so much more important than anything around that table that we've had. So if you have that EQ, if you have that emotional intelligence and you are tapped straight into your intuition, let that lead you. Absolutely, absolutely. Let that lead you. Now, I wanted to be able to turn around and we'll wrap this up, but I really wanted to ask Ms. Risha if there was anything further that she really wanted to be able to, A, let people know about the work that she does, and B... You know what? I have a lot to say. Wait, wait, wait hang on just a minute. Um, okay. I'm still not done with that, why the business, business advice doesn't work for women. Uh, so yes. The baggage, what they don't realise is the conditioning that women come with, valuing ourselves. We talked a bit about the giving. Women give away way too much instead of receiving. So we have to open up to receiving, to receiving, yes. money, to receiving compliments. The first couple of times I got testimonials, I was like, so, oh my God, wow, thank you. I was like, I couldn't believe they were praising me. Because again, in the corporate world, you don't have praise. I know. So I couldn't, I was close to receiving. And I, I want women to know how important it is for them to open up to receive. That's one. Yes. Giving versus yes. receiving. Women need to be told more to receive, not to give more. Okay. The other thing, charging, uh, oh, sorry, before we go there, visibility. Any kind of online business requires you to be visible, to do marketing. So instead of marketing these days, they call it visibility, right? It's the less offensive term okay. instead of sales and marketing. Okay. <laughs> what visibility is, all our life as women, we have somehow been conditioned to play small, to be small, to not be seen, to not be heard, right? Remember the conversation, yes. what happens when a woman speaks up? And we have imbibed those messages so unconsciously, we don't even realize where they are still holding us back. So even though you may have left corporate, even though you may have left that school or teacher or parent who mm -hmm. told you to shut up, right? You do not yes. realize how long you're still carrying that message within yourself. Oh. how badly you're holding yourself back from being visible, from speaking up. 
Agreed. Uh, before you can go out and be visible, you need to let go of that baggage. You need to realize that you're carrying that baggage and you need to let go of it. So that's why we call it in. at marketing and sales or yeah. even if we don't like sales and marketing. It's because we have not ever been given the freedom and the space to speak up. Great. Start creating those spaces for yourselves. Find groups or places where you can open up and be yourself that give you the freedom to voice your opinions and your thoughts and just be authentically you. Find those Beautiful. spaces, practice there, let go of that baggage that holds you back. Okay. Beautiful. So giving versus receiving, being visible and speaking up. Another uh, thing, charging what you're worth. Ha <laughs> ha, ah, this one is my favorite. Oh, this is a big <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, as girls, uh, I know this is a bit sexist and some people might say it's outdated, but I've spoken with hundreds of women across the globe over the last two years. And I realized it doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter yeah. what your religion is. It doesn't matter how old you are. Chances are yeah. you have experienced this at some point in your life, especially the early years that your purpose in life is to grow up, get married and have kids and be a good mother and a good yep. wife. You've been bombarded with that message a million times. That your worth is determined by how much you give, by how much you nurture and support the people around you. Yep. And we have imbibed that message so strongly, it's like in our DNA. When you step into the business world, you have to undo a bit of that programming. You have to realize that your worth doesn't come from just what you do at home as a mother or as a wife. You have to realize your worth comes from the impact you make on your clients. And there is no boss sitting here to negotiate a salary with. Right? You're, it's you. You need, to yeah. put, you need to put a number to your worth. And so many times women stick their head in the sand over this because it's like, oh, my God, or I'm just going to give it all away. It's just easier for me to give it away, give it away, give it away. The price oh, themselves that's the, when you're starting out. That's what women do. That's the, because yeah. our self-worth, our self-esteem is so low from those years and years of conditioning. We have been told we are not good enough, whether it was in corporate or in school or wherever. We do not realize. Well, you're too much. Just, well, you're yeah, too are much. you too much? Yes. Yeah. You're too much. No one yeah, you're too me. loud. You're too much. You're too pushy. You're too. You're too. You're too, 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 too. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm a leader. Thank you, honey. That's not called being a boss. <laughs> and it takes a long while for us to undo that programming that tells us we are not worth it. Yes. Those are the, and until you realize your own worth, you're not going to be able to charge clients what you're worth. It has to come from you. It has to come from within. You have to own the difference or the change that you're making in a client's life. I've seen women who make a huge impact on their clients, but they charge a pittance. They charge really, really low. Okay, because no, I, I couldn't charge more than $47 an hour or $100 an hour. I couldn't do that. No, it would not be fair. Fair to who? But who said you couldn't? Yeah, who said you couldn't? It's just that voice yeah. in your And fair to who? Uh -huh. If your client sees or feels that you're providing a value much more than $100, then it's fair to charge them that much more. Agreed. So, Agreed. But you will not be able to sell those services, you would be able to charge that much more if you continue doubting yourself, if you feel that you're not worth it. So it has to start from you. And so many women also have a problem with the word selling, okay, selling our services. And if, if and it's completely okay if you do, what you need to do maybe then is flip it a little bit and turn around and say, I'm sharing my gifts. Exactly. Other people don't have other people don't have the gifts or the knowledge that I have. And for me to be able to share these gifts and step into and own what I can do, I need to be able to support my family at the same time. So make sure that when you... I need to pay the bills, the rent, the food and all of that. Absolutely. So don't undersell yourself or don't undersell your skills or don't undershare your skills. Share your gifts and skills with the world, but also ensure that you're getting that exchange of energy in return, which is money. And money is energy. Money is energy. We touched upon this a bit in our conversation with uh, Debbie and more in our conversation with Cindy. Money is mm -hmm. energy. And once you realize that, 
things change. Once you change your perspective around money, money is another big thing that women struggle with because we are told, you know, so often we're told, oh, don't bother your pretty head about it. Your father will take care of it. Your brother will take care of it. Your husband will take care of it. You don't have to worry about how to balance the spreadsheet or uh, the checkbook. God. Right? And it's not that women are bad at math. Okay, till middle, school, till middle school, women, girls are as good as boys or if not better at maths. It's when society starts conditioning them and telling them that girls are not supposed to be good at math, that is when the doubt creeps in. Society plants that doubt in your head and it carries over and we think that we're not good at handling money. We are not good at, money becomes this big bad thing that we try to avoid. Mm -hmm. And if you're avoiding money, like, you're not going to be able to share your services with the world in exchange. Agreed. You're not Agreed. going to be able to charge what you're worth. If you continue thinking that money is this big bad thing that you're forced to deal with and you would rather not. Make it a game. Make it welcome the energy in. Welcome money in. And, and give it a safe place like your bank account or your wallet to know that it's comfortable for it to sit there. Absolutely. That's, so many people are uncomfortable with it. So it, it's these things, you know, these things that we're talking about right now, this is what most online programs and courses and everyone that tells you on how to set up an online business, they don't cover. Women struggle with different issues. We struggle with giving versus receiving. We struggle with being visible and speaking up. We struggle self -worth. with self-worth issues. We struggle with charging anything because we're- But what comes naturally to us? Absolutely. And you have to deal with those kind of issues. No amount of marketing gurus or marketing lessons or sales coaching or copywriting coaching is going to be able to fix that. Okay. And that's why I'm throwing I, money at it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I do the work I do. That's why I focus on one on one work with my clients. Because I walk them through my approach to business is a bit unconventional. I don't nowhere on my website do I brag about how much money I made them, I help them make. Because what yeah. I really do is I help them change who they are as a person. What I'm most proud of is the changes that come about in my clients. Beautiful. Earlier this week, one client joked that I had walked through everything from meditations to WordPress. We started our sessions with a meditation when we started back a few months ago to help her find her alignment, be in tune with who she is and what she wants. Again, this is another thing. As women, we are afraid to own what we want. We are afraid to want. We are afraid yes. to set that number that I want to make 100K in my business this year. We are afraid to set, even, to say even to ourselves that, you know what, I want that fancy house or that fancy car or I want to be able to hire a housekeeper. We are afraid to acknowledge that we want something and we want it just for ourselves. That it's a and it's okay, to, it's okay to want what you want. Exactly. It's okay to want what you want and it's not selfish at all. No, right? because you know what it is? It's okay to want what you want, but until you get clear on what you want, the universe is going to bring you wishy-washy bullshit and that's <laughs> not what you want. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, when I start working with clients, they find it, some find it uncomfortable that, in our very first session, I make them do a meditation to get clear on what they want. Because often they don't know what they want. And even if they do, they're not comfortable accepting it or saying it out loud. They think it's bad yeah. for them to say that they want to make 100K and live in a nice house. Right? That I still remember the session good. that you had me do that in. Yep. <laughs> Where I was literally... And it wasn't that it wasn't okay for me to want that. It was I could actually physically see, feel, and understand that I can have that. And that it's okay. And it, it's okay to and it's, it and it's possible to have it. And there was the possibility of actually having it. Like you can dabble in it and go, yeah, yeah, I can have that if I want. But to actually feel the feels surrounding when you're actually visualizing seeing yourself standing in central park in new york in, you know and you can feel the snow and it's cold and you know when you feel all of that besides the fact that it's overwhelming you are calling it in quicker than you would ever know and you're amazingly you're amazingly able to have that exactly 
We did that thing over a year ago, Kim, and yet you still remember every detail. Right? Oh, oh my God, I still get goosebumps every time I think about it because I know it's coming and I know I can have that. And if I change it, then that's okay because I know I can have the next thing as well. Absolutely, absolutely. That was was a phenomenal... Just acknowledging that they want something is such a big deal for women. So that's where we start. And yes, I teach them about WordPress and funnels and marketing and sales, but it's always from a place of feeling. Okay. That's that's the business strategist in you. That's the business. You know, you can take something and mould it into something absolutely amazingly beautiful with that very. That that's the mix of the masculine and the feminine that you bring in. That's the, the business yeah. side is the masculine, which is which is where you operate from on such an amazing level. But you also bring that feminine, intuitive. You call us out on our bullshit type <laughs> stuff to be able to get the best vision of our highest wants out of us and I've I've experienced how you do that and it's just phenomenal and to have that mix of the masculine and the feminine you've actually brought that together beautifully thank you Kim in your business and and you know that is that is exactly why I do the work I do today um I used to be a techie. I could have done a hundred different things after leaving corporate. I could have taught coding. I could have set up my own software firm. I could have, I did tech writing for a while. I could have done so many other things. But you know what? I think women's voices have been suppressed for long enough. It's time we spoke up. It's time we made our voices heard. It's time we othered that we became part of mainstream. And that's why I do the work I do today because I could also have done career coaching for women, but then the corporate, I realized corporate is not a place where women can grow. They can't be themselves because the corporate environment, the structure doesn't allow it. It's only by Which, doing business for yourself that you can get yeah. that freedom to be yourself, to be authentically you, to be the best version of you that you can. Only a business is willing to do that. I absolutely agree. And, and that's that mix of being able to bring your very amazing skills from corporate because you know how you know how you can get results. That's 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 the corporate yeah. side of us. That's how we know how we can get results. Now, you mix that with the intuitive magic that we have within and, oh, my gosh, you just <laughs> how a woman can step into and rise up and do it in a way that is nurturing and respectful and embracing others who are doing the same thing. That's that's the reason why all eight of us do the business that we do now. This yes. is yes. We see through that stuff that we don't want anymore and we want to make something better with what we do have. Exactly, yes. We're all doing our bit to empower women. Agreed. We each do it in different yeah. ways. But we, that's that's the essence of our business for all every single one of us, and that's why I call this series "Empowered Conversations," <laughs> which is just fantastic because we are all so grateful that you invited us to come along and take part in this amazing series yeah. of conversation where we get very honest and about our journeys and share experiences. And shared experiences is how women have learnt over centuries yeah. of being able to move forward and that sense of sisterhood, that sense of tribe, of knowing that other yes. sisters have your back. In today's Absolutely. Media families and you know rat race and everyone, every man for himself. That sense of community, that sense of sisterhood, to know that other women have your back, that's such such a huge gift. It's such a huge blessing. And that's what and we are creating. It's so cool. I just wanted to touch on the fact that, again, to be able to see how this has organically come together over the space of, you know, eight or nine days and to be part of it, to be able to see how this has beautifully come together where in the past, in a corporate setting, women were just so competitive and masculine and pushing and... Pitchy. Pitchy and trying to... Whereas we've all just come together with 
with our own unique mix of skills and experiences and abilities and we're all just supportive of each other and we cannot thank you enough for having invited us in to these beautiful sessions so that we can share with the world exactly what International Women's Day means to us and how it should be seen Absolutely. rather than rather than the fakery that it has been over however many years they've decided to do it. So was there anything else you would like to say before we wrap up this amazing session, Risha? No, I think I've kind of said it all. There's, there's <laughs> always more, you know, honestly, there's always more. There's always more. I can go on forever, but I think we covered everything that I wanted to for this session. I wanted to highlight the differences between the feminine and the masculine yeah. doing things and where women get stuck. And I think we've been able to do that beautifully. Thank you so much, Kim. Thank you very much for your time, Risha. And again, we're also grateful to have taken part in this. And we, you know, let's see where this takes us all as a collective of amazing women sharing stories, because this is what we do. Exactly. So thank you again, honey. Talk to you soon. Pleasure, Kim. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>